Hello, I'm James Harvey, the Professor of Music Theory at the College of Southern Nevada with 5-Minute Music Theory. Let's begin that 5-minute timer and head over to a screen with just a treble and a bass clef on it. This video is about a trick that can be used to determine the major key associated with a key signature. Now, before we get into this trick, realize that it is just a trick, and the best way to determine these keys is to have knowledge of the circle of fifths or to just commit them to memory. So now let's get into the trick with that little public service announcement under our belts. I'm going to write a key signature with a whole bunch of sharps. In fact, all seven of them. And I'm just going to do it starting with treble clef. That looks like a mess. So how are we going to figure out that key signature without having it memorized? Again, memorize them. It's going to be for your benefit to do that. So when we have a key signature with sharps, there's two steps to determine that major key. The first step is to find the last sharp. And that's from left to right. So if we go from left to right, the last sharp is B sharp in this instance. So I'm going to put that in parentheses here. B sharp. Then we take that B sharp onto step two and we go up a half step from B sharp. And you'll have to take my word for it. You can compare it to the piano keyboard. Find a B sharp, go up a half step, and you end up with a C sharp. Therefore, the key, the major key, associated with this key signature that has seven sharps is C sharp major. And this trick works for all the keys that have sharps. How about let's do one with fewer sharps. Follow the same steps and we'll end up with the correct answer if we do it correctly. So we have three sharps here on the screen now. F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. The last sharp that I just said was G sharp. Go up a half step from G sharp and you end up with an A. Therefore the key the major key associated with this key signature is A major. Now we're going to go into flats. We're not going to get into minor keys yet because we need to be really comfortable with major keys. Once you figure out the major key, the minor key is really not that bad to figure it out. But we do need to figure out keys with flats and the process is a little bit different with flats. Let's do, instead of all seven flats, how about let's just write four flats and there's only one step to figuring out these keys that have the flats. And it is to find the penultimate flat. What is penultimate? Penultimate is a fancy way of saying second to last. The last flat here is D flat. The second to last flat, I'll circle it, is an A flat. Therefore, this key is A flat major, the major key. Again, remember, we're only doing major keys. So A flat major has four flats. If I get rid of a few of these flats and we're left with two, why did I do that? I'm going to put those back. We'll follow the same process and we'll end up with the correct answer. The last flat is E flat. Second to last flat happens to be the first flat as well. <clears throat> B flat major would be that major key. So it's really as easy as that. It's a nice little trick that works for almost all keys. However, it's not all keys that it works for. If we look at a key that has only one flat, <coughs> excuse me, like that, uh, has the one flat, trick doesn't work because there is no penultimate flat if there's only one flat. This is one that you just have to commit to memory. And another one of these reasons why I don't recommend that you use this trick for very long because it doesn't work for all the keys. F major is the key that has one flat. And if you know your key, uh, your circle of fifths, I mean, then you know that because it's the one that's one step directly to the left counterclockwise of C at the top. Speaking of C, at the top of that circle of fifths, it's the other key for which there is no trick. And you just have to remember it because there are no sharps and no flats in C major. It's our blank key. But for all the other keys, you can use that trick. And it is a really good way to get started with these and these key signatures if you can remember how to do them. But then keep in the back of your mind, you just have to learn your circle of fifths and you just have to learn these keys to where you can recognize them at sight. This is a language, so you don't want to have to look up the definition of a word in the dictionary every time. That would be like the, going through this process. Just learn it and know what it means and it'll save you a lot of time, I promise. But for now, you can use this nice little trick. Thank you.